What inspires change? What motivates us? It's what's inside that moves us. What moves you? Get the Scion story at scion.com. Because the beetles do the Although the coconut rhinoceros beetle has spread to every village around the island, the battle against this invasive species isn't over yet. The coconut rhinoceros beetle eradication program has already introduced a fungus that is killing the rhino beetle population slowly. However, Operations Chief Roland Kitigua says they have also created a new trap called Hotel Rhino, which he considers 10 times more effective than placing a 5-gallon bucket and synthetic pheromone on a tree to trap the rhino beetles. He mentioned since the beetles are very good at finding organic matter and sites to breed, they are using this knowledge to their advantage. What we're doing now is we're taking 55-gallon oil barrels and we are putting green waste in uh, decomposing coconut material. And by doing that, it's becoming a very attractive um, uh, site. And what we do is we put chicken wire mesh on top. What happens is the rhino beetles are small enough that when they smell the chemicals coming off of the uh, decomposing organic matter, they're attracted to the barrel, they land on the wire, they then drop in because they're small enough. But what happens is if they try to escape, they have to open up their, uh, their elytra and their wings to try to fly, and they become too large to escape. Kitigwat says essentially Hotel Rhino becomes a one-way trap. He notes a metal bucket layer with holes is also incorporated to help them count how many beetles are trapped. He says they've trapped up to six beetles a week so far. They also are testing a UV light on the barrels because the rhino beetles are also attracted to it. He mentions there is no need for a synthetic pheromone to attract rhino beetles because once the rhino beetles are trapped, their natural pheromones will attract more of its species to the barrels. Kilagua's eradication team is also scouting around the island every week to look for high incident areas and asking homeowners to adopt these barrels. However, they couldn't do this project on their own. With uh, the help of uh, PTI Guam, yeah. they've been providing us with these oil barrels uh, to do our experiments. And we have uh, over 40 barrels out there right now. Nice. And it's making a big impact. Kitigua says the hope is to get enough barrels or show people how to build these new traps on their own. They also want to engage the community further by launching a website to help the eradication program gather data on infestations and provide a service learning project for students. He emphasizes it is the community that keeps them on track. What we're trying to do at this point is develop a site where we can do citizen science. As uh, soon as that website is up, people will be able to collect data, maybe make traps like this on their own, okay. and then just upload that data to that site, and we'll be able to see uh, and gather more data uh, across the entire island. And as a byproduct of these new traps, the rhino beetles also produce nutrient-rich organic matter for plants and encourage composting. Kitigua says the organic matter can easily be sterilized before people use it. In the meantime, he encourages anyone willing to adopt a barrow or seeking more information to call the invasive species hotline at 475-PEST. He adds no one has to wait for them to start a trap. If you find rhino beetle breeding in any material, take that material, put it in the barrel, and then fill it with coconut decomposing material. But make sure that you keep about a six inch gap from the lip. That way the rhino beetles cannot crawl out. If you keep that below, they will try to fly out, and when they fly out, the screen that you put on top will prevent them from escaping. So this is a one-way trap, okay. and um, once again, it's giving us hope. Josh Tukanko, PNC News.